everybody, welcome to the Sky Lounge, and this is Cruise Peruse, episode number 76. Boys and girls, it's been a while. It's been a while, it's been a while. I know, I know, you fuckers have been missing me. Maybe none of you have been missing me. That's okay, that's okay, but it's been a long fucking weekend. It's been a long fucking weekend. Not in the good way, not in the fucking good way. Long story short, boys and girls, I was in LA last night. Or actually, all of yesterday, I was in LA, and I had to take care of some fucking errands uh, due to some complications in the health department in Southern Nevada. Why did you have to go to LA then? Well, for my mother's store, we had to take care of some fucking paperwork, and that shit was just a fucking nightmare. All right. My mom is also, uh, and myself included, we're very frugal at times in certain aspects of, of life. So transportation was one of those things where I'm like, ah, we, we don't want to spend $100 on a ticket, you know, on a flight. So we took the fucking Greyhound bus. And I swear to God, boys and girls, this is my second time ever uh, riding the Greyhound bus back and forth from LA. You know, it's not terrible. Uh, five and a half hours just in a bus like that, it's not terrible. But you begin to really see the cesspool of humanity. And to really continue and drive that point, I had to come drive to the fucking health district today, or the health department, whatever the fuck you want to call it. And every time I go, to, I, I have to fucking deal with the health department, I want to fucking kill somebody, okay? Any fucking time the health department has us fucking do something, I just want to fucking rip their goddamn hairs off, their pubic hair specifically, and shove them right up their fucking face and say, listen, motherfucker. Do you understand how fucking logistically dif fucking disgusting and difficult it is to fucking try to even run a restaurant, <laughs> let alone the fucking paperwork that's involved with it? And these fuckers just make it worse. The these fuckers exacerbate the, the fucking shittiness of your day. That's what the health department does. I swear to God. And all you motherfuckers that have worked in a restaurant before, you can attest to this shit. The health department is the absolute fucking worst thing ever. Uh, you're, you're off, your temperature's off by two degrees Fahrenheit. We have to dock you on our report. What? Jesus, fuck, dude. Like, listen, if temperatures are that much of a significant difference in food, everyone would be dead, okay? Do you understand how the fucking human immune system has evolved in, in our society today? Holy fucking Christ. At this point... I want to grab every fucking employee of the health department, line them up, and just slap them all once, slap them backhanded, uh, you know, the second time around, and then just ask them, like, do you fuckers really think what you're doing is helping out restaurants? Granted, there are some shitty restaurants out there that are unbelievably disgusting. You know, they got rats, they got cockroaches, all this shit. But generally speaking... Okay, generally speaking, you know what most restaurant owners want to do? They want to make money! So cleanliness is key. They'll fucking get at that shit. Like, I, seriously, man, do you think businesses are just there to just fucking ruin you? Like, no! Most businesses, they're just there for their self-interest of making money. Okay? So, fuck, man. I, seriously, like, I had to deal with this shit for like two, three days. I'm fucking done with it, thank God. But seriously, that is my fucking biggest gripe about the health department where I just say, wow, you fucking assholes will willingly just take all the fucking time out of my goddamn day and have all these weird fucking rules to just push people off the fucking edge. And I'm like, congratulations, health department. If you want to piss people off, you've done an excellent job at it. Holy fuck. And my morning didn't even start off great either, all right? I'm not going to lie to you. My morning starts off with me pulling out of the driveway and about 30 seconds into the drive, like maybe even 10 seconds into the drive, I have a fucking street in my in the cul-de-sac that I live in that's closed off for road, road pavement. And the thing is, they get this little notification sticker, but they haven't given me the specific dates, when, from what time to what time this is going to take place. So again... All you fucking bureaucratic motherfuckers, I want to strangle all of you. I kid you not. I want to fucking strangle all of you 
and kick you upside the head if I have a chance. And if there's no legal repercussions, right? I'm, <laughs> that That's always the thing. That's always the thing I say here. I get angry. I get violent. I never act on the violence. And when I throw out these hypotheticals, I always say, listen, if, if I don't have any legal repercussions, I would do this shit, right? That's a talk of what a pussy does, all right? So boys and girls, I'm not gonna lie to you. If you meet me in real life, very agreeable. I try to just talk my mind, but I don't fucking get violent. I don't, I don't fucking think, you know, you gotta fight. You know, you don't have to fucking fight to, you know, to win your battle. You, you can use your words, right? And, you know, unfortunately, as we segue into some sports ball, words were what really hyped up this U.S. women's national team. And I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, I'm still on the train of, of the U.S. women's national team hype. But I caught a glimpse of that game yesterday. Spain versus U.S. women's national team in the Women's World Cup, round of 16. U.S. women's national team beats Spain 2-1 to one in regulation. Two of those goals were penalties. Now, I know that last penalty very soft. That first penalty, pretty much just a given penalty. Um, Rapino scores both penalties. Fantastic effort by her. And it just goes to show you Rapino's a beast. A beast from the Pacific Northwest. Actually, west, not east. Just wanted it to rhyme. But I was kind of unconvinced yesterday. I, I was watching that game yesterday and thinking, all right, Spain played us pretty well. Uh, get You know what? Getting a goal conceded a minute after a penalty, you know, seven minutes in, Spanish uh, player who smartly in front of the keeper and, and the U.S. defender gets on the ball, intercepts it inside. I don't know if it was inside. I can't recall if it was inside the box or barely outside the box, but seriously, to give a possession like that, like a fucking moron, was was unbelievable. It, it got me back to thinking about that Cameroon-England game where Cameroon players were a bunch of fucking assholes and they, and they don't know how to play football because they don't know what the fuck a back pass is. Um, it, it, it went to that realm of, like, frustration. But thought of it, sat on it a little bit, you know, it's been about nearly 20 plus hours since the game. Winners win. That's the key. Winners find way, like winners find ways to win in the grimiest, grittiest situation. And your U.S. Women's National Team is the defending World Cup champion right and they are in the cusp of something amazing if they can pull through in the quarterfinals now the quarterfinals is going to be on friday <clears throat> the u.s women's national team will be facing the french women's national team in france i believe that game is going to be in paris uh, 12 uh, p.m pacific standard time on friday so boys and girls you already know what i'm going to be doing i'm going to be watching that shit cheering for the fucking Americans. And yeah, I, I still, I'm not convinced. Like, in the same token as how the U.S. won unconvincingly, you know, in, in relative terms of how they performed in the group stages, I just do not see the confidence and the swagger in, in France. I just don't see it. I don't see it. When France beat, you know, Brazil in extra time in the round of 16, I just kept thinking, this team isn't all that great. I don't see the fucking hype behind them. They got lucky. Uh, and I know the same could be said for the U.S. Women's National Team, but I think skill-wise and just the players on the pitch, U.S. Women's are they're better. They're completely better. I mean, by a huge fucking margin. So I'm expecting a U.S. win on Friday. Now, there's going to be some other matchups like... Germany versus Sweden because Sweden beat Canada in the round of 16 as did Germany with Nigeria in the round of 16. Germany, not really that surprised. I have them pegged uh, to go to the final against the USA. Uh, Sweden kind of comes off as a surprise because I thought Canada was really going to push themselves forward. But a bit of controversy yesterday. Uh, penalty awarded to Canada but their greatest goal scorer in Canadian football history, uh, 
second in women's world uh, football history, uh, next to Abby Wambach. Shout out to Abby Wambach, the greatest fucking, the greatest goddamn goal scorer in U.S. women's history. I mean, nay, U.S. men's, women's, U.S. soccer history. Now, Sinclair had the opportunity to net in a goal and surpass, I believe, Abby Wambach's uh, uh, goal tally there. But unfortunately, she actually, um, oh boy, what's the word? You know, I always forget the fucking words. She delegated the responsibility to another player and the ball went straight to the keeper. Uh, Canada lost 1-0. And again, I thought Canada was going to be that squad that probably went up. But again, a very disappointing way to end it. And it just it just goes to show you, you just never know with the round of 16. You just never know. Um, like Norway beating Australia. That that was kind of a doozy, right? And so you, you have all these crazy round of 16 fixtures happening. I believe the last of it will be played today. Uh, I think it's uh, Italy versus China and Japan versus Netherlands. Honestly, all four matches, I don't really want any winners there. Maybe Italy, maybe Netherlands. I don't really care, though, uh, just because I do not like I, I, most of those countries I don't really care for in terms of international football. But, boys and girls, I mean, it, it, it's crazy how this World Cup is winding down. And I, I keep, you know, going back to this... Uh, this statement of, you know, it, you can discount it because they're women, whatever, if you want to be that asshole, live your fucking life, you fucking cunt, but the Women's World Cup has been spectacular, I think in terms of drama, in terms of viewership, in terms of engaging the U.S. audience back to soccer, uh, especially after that debacle of not, you know, qualifying in um, the 2018 World Cup for a men's I think it's a spectacular job of what the U.S. Women's National Team is able to do right now. And hopefully they keep it going and this Women's World Cup gets some more notoriety and more uh, popularity and attention. So that way, football is a beautiful game, man. And I, I want more people to watch it and love it. That's the, And if you're a fan of a sport, that's what you should really hope and aspire for. If you're one of those fuckers that, oh, this is our game, nobody else should watch it, like, dude, you're an asshole. And I know I give hockey fans a lot of gripe for that shit, but, you know, I've, I've met hockey fans who are very open arm, you know, willing to be like, hey, man, come to our fucking stuff. It's awesome. And, you know, it's it's thanks to some of those people that I've met in my life with hockey that I've, I've grown to love hockey. And I have, I have become absolutely obsessed with it, you know, even in the off season, right after, you know, the NHL awards which was last week, boys and girls, that is on the Sky Lounge page now, compilation video vlog on the Sky Lounge page, so you should, go, you should go check that shit out, but after the award show, we had the NHL draft happening on Friday and Saturday, and wouldn't you know it, the Vegas Golden Knights had a couple of picks, now, I apologize for not memorizing the names of the second day draft picks for the Vegas Golden Knights. I know we had a couple between uh, rounds two and five. I don't know if we had any six round picks, but got to give shout out to the first round pick because yeah, the, generally speaking, boys and girls, the first round picks is the names we always remember. Uh, so Peyton Krebs, welcome to the Vegas Golden Knights family. I got my Golden Knights jersey, repping it out with the away kit today sweater, whatever the fuck you want to call it, kids. I don't really care, but repping my Vegas Golden Knights because Vegas is now um, home to our new prospect, Peyton Krebs. Now, uh, if you saw the NHL draft, you saw Peyton uh, limping to the stage because he had a minor Achilles, uh, Achilles tear, if I'm not mistaken. And from all the scouting reports that I've skimmed through, and shout out to VGK coverage for making those wonderful scouting videos. And, you know, I mean, the Suzuki and Branstrom thing might not have aged how we would have wanted, you know, for them to stay with us. But those videos, along with other channels like the Hockey Guy, um, you know, even like those fucking TSN and Sportsnet stuff. It's been really helpful uh, for me to get a kind of idea of what this kid's going to be. And honestly, post-injury and maybe a half a season, possibly a postseason with the Chicago Wolves, 
I think Peyton's going to be a fucking fantastic asset, and the Vegas Golden Knights will continue their successful ways. And, and you know what? I, I see a lot of people out here, you know, on, on social media just sharing their frustration with the Vegas Golden Knights of the Vegas Golden Knights because this is a successful franchise, you know, within its first two years, two fucking postseasons, uh, one Stanley Cup final appearance. And all I hear and see and read are just these fucking bitch boy complaints. This team sucks! The, the league is rigged! And then once we blow it, ah, they suck! They're the worst fucking team! It's like, where, where the fuck are you coming from, buddy? Right? And over the weekend, actually yesterday, big news came out for the Vegas Golden Knights where we have signed William Carlson for an eight year extension. Four point, uh, I believe, I'm sorry, I apologize. Five point nine million dollars annual average earnings. Um, that equates to about forty-two point something million dollars, if I'm not mistaken, boys and girls. Please check the math. But the important thing is, we got Wild Bill for eight years. And again, I saw the trolls coming out of the woodworks. Overpaid. Vegas sucks. Cap hell. Like dipshit. You don't think the fucking GMs know that? You don't think fucking Kelly McCrimmon, you don't think fucking George McPhee knows that shit? You don't think they're fucking working around the phone making trades right now? You don't think they're gonna fucking think about the cap situation, you fucking moron? Holy shit, dude. All you fucking dipshits who are out there saying all this shit, it's like, dude, what are you talking about? Do your fucking research. Yes, Vegas is gonna be over the cap, which is gonna be at $81.5 million. Uh, the NHL... Uh, based on their approximation earlier in the months, we're uh, projecting the cap space to be about $2 million higher, but it didn't come to fruition. So now teams are going to be dumping cap, uh, dumping players left and right. Uh, and don't be surprised, boys and girls, if we let a lot of fun, great players go in, uh, you know, in the offseason. You know, people keep talking, and, and the talks is uh, Colin Miller, Cody Eakin, all these cats going around uh, for, for the cap dump. And with Vegas, we'll just have to see, man. I mean, we got Pacioretty locked up for a couple more years. What was that, five more years? Is that right? Uh, Stoner, uh, Mark Stone, we got locked in for seven, eight more years. Now we got William Carlson for eight more years. So there's a lot of great pieces. In my opinion, I think we got a lot of great pieces moving forward that can challenge and be contenders for the next three, four seasons. Now, the William Carlson cap space situation, I think is brilliant. I think paying a guy for that extended extended period for that much money for, for the job that Carlson does, I think is spectacular. I think Carlson goes really underrated um, especially this past season, uh, compared to, relative to the first season that he had 43 goals. He's the greatest goal scorer. I'm like, ah, oh, well. Then you see him in the second season, has 20 plus goals, but you see the numbers and the way he actually plays on the ice. He's spectacular. You know, he might have those, uh, you know, those turnovers, yes, but one of the best two way fucking forwards out there. And to lock him in that price where you see forwards in the market getting fucking valued at exorbitant prices. I think it's a steal for the Vegas Golden Knights. The dude is still relatively young. And when we keep him around uh, to the end of his contract, he's going to be like early 30s. He's going to be in his early 30s. So for those of you who keep saying Vegas is going to be shit, we're going to just be in cap hell. We're probably going to be in cap hell, but the reality is like most teams are right now. Most teams are. They're trying to adjust that before the season starts. Dipshits. That's how. That's what the fucking GMs do. That's their fucking job title. That's what the hell they're there to fucking take their money for. Okay. Holy shit. I. Okay. Whenever I have to explain common sense shit like this, I feel like I'm going fucking crazy. I feel like I'm taking fucking crazy pills. And so, I gotta sit here and tell all you fucking idiots who are just coming at the Vegas Golden Knights because you're hating on it, that, that's fucking fine. And I'm going to be there. I'm going to be right fucking there with you fucking, for you fucking assholes. When we actually win, trust me, you motherfuckers, I'm going to be right fucking there, rubbing it all in your fucking faces. Trust me. Listen, boys and girls, I don't hide this, okay? I'm not a sore loser. When I lose, I take that shit the way it is. I'm like, oh, fuck, we lost. We weren't good enough. 
We got to get better. How do we get better? I get frustrated because I know there's room for improvement. Because obviously when you lose, there is vast room for improvement. But let me tell you what. I'm also a sore winner. I'm, a, I'm the sorest fucking winner you'll ever meet. You guys have seen it on these cruise perusers. Whenever my team or a team that I pick wins, I will make sure all you motherfuckers know. I will fucking teabag that information until you fuckers say, stop beating the dead horse, which all you fucking pussies tend to do. Oh, you see, dude, get over it. They won. Ugh. Like, no, motherfucker. If they won, they're going to fucking embrace that shit, put it all on your fucking face, and make sure you never fucking forget. All these fucking pussies on social media, in real life now, it's mind-blowing. It's fucking mind-blowing. The level of pussydom and the level of fucking far-fetched thinking. Just, oh, if, if we gather together and complain about something, it's going to get canceled. Like, fucking petitions. What the fuck are you going to do with petitions, man? Petitions and fucking, oh, what's that shit? Protesting, that's right. Petitions and protesting, like, those are the two fucking things. The two fucking P's, P and P, where I think, guys, this isn't really doing much, all right? Unless you have actual backings, unless you have, and, and I hate to say it, unless you have the fucking dirty hands in the fucking dirty jar, you're not going to get shit done, all right? The, the sadness of life and reality is that shit don't get done most of the times because you don't have the right people. You don't have the right fucking money, right? But that's just me being an asshole. That's just me being an asshole. Like, I'm not going to fucking... I'm, I'm not going to fucking apologize to you people. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm just going to lay here, you know, say my shit, say my two cents. And that's how we do on the cruise programs, boys and girls, Right? And it's funny, also, speaking of fucking pussies and all this shit, uh, while we're at the house, I genuinely believe, genuinely believe that uh, if you go on any social media pages nowadays and you read the co fucking comment pages, you will get brain cancer. However, um, I still read comments uh, in, in social media pages once in a while because they're fucking hilarious. And, you know, being the fucking... Uh, disciple of Kanye West and the egocentric cunt that I am sometimes I have to read my own comments on my fucking uh, YouTube page and shout out to the guy who said <laughs> I miss you shit talking LeBron James and the Lakers buddy trust me that's coming soon because the off season is upon us you know free agency is going to be a fucking disaster for everybody including the Lakers potentially so that's it for me on this cruise peruse um be, be expecting more because yeah, that, that whole fucking weekend was a weird thing, but we're going to have cruise peruse today uploaded. It's going to be awesome. Going to have the podcast, more cruise peruse tomorrow. So boys and girls, follow me at the sky lounge and all the links in the description below, like, comment, subscribe for more daily contents. And if you want to get more double chin action till then these crusty ass lips.